A clean room differs from an ordinary ventilated or conditioned room mainly in three ways. First, increased air supply. The increased air supply is an important aspect of particle control. Normal air conditioning systems are designed for 0.5 to 2 air changes per hour essentially based on the occupancy level or as determined from the building exhaust levels. A clean room would have at least 10 air changes per hour and could be as high as 600 for absolute cleanliness. The large air supply is mainly provided to eliminate the settling of the particulate and dilute contamination produced in the room to an acceptable concentration level. Second, the use of high efficiency filters. High efficiency filters are used to filter the supply air into a clean room to ensure the removal of small particles. The high efficiency filters used in clean rooms are installed at the point of air discharge into the room. Room pressurization is mainly provided to ensure that untreated air does not pass from dirtier adjacent areas into the clean room. And third, room pressurization. The clean room is positively pressurized with respect to the adjacent areas. This is done by supplying more air and extracting less air from the room than is supplied to it. There are four important air conditioning design considerations for clean room system design. First, supplying airflow in sufficient volume and cleanliness to support the cleanliness rating of the room. Second, Introducing air in a manner to prevent stagnant areas where particles could accumulate. Third, conditioning air to meet clean room temperature, humidity, and filtration requirements. And fourth, ensuring enough conditioned makeup air to maintain the specified positive pressurization. Besides the room preparation in terms of materials and finishes play an equally important role in meeting these requirements. The idea is to minimize the internal generation of contaminants from the surfaces. Filtration. Filtration is an important aspect of clean rooms. Most filters are defined by their particle removal efficiency and airflow rate. Clean rooms require very high efficiency filters. Clean room air filtration technology centers around two types of air filters. One TYPR of filter is called the High Efficiency Particulate Air Filter or HEPA filter. HEPA filters are replaceable extended media dry type having a minimum particle collective efficiency of 99.97 to 99.997% for a 0.3 micron particle. The second type of filter is called the Ultra Low Penetration Air Filter or ULPA filter. Most ULPA filters are replaceable extended media dry filters that have a minimum particle collection efficiency of 99.9997% efficient for particles greater than or equal to 0.12 micron in size. The high efficiency filters belong to the interception family of filters and are referred to as absolute super interceptor. Absolute filters are used only where an extremely high level of cleanliness or purity is required. Both HEPA and ULPA types fall in this category. There are four basic mechanisms in which fibrous air filters remove contamination from the airstreams. Straining or sieving. Particles larger than the clearances between fibers cannot pass through and are collected on the media. Inertial or impaction. Particles due to their inertia leave the airstreams around filters and impact the fiber directly. Adhesives usually retain the particles. Interception. Particles small enough follow the airstream's line around the filter, but are intercepted by the fiber due to the dimensions of the fiber and the particle. And diffusion. Particles are small enough and have sufficiently low mass so that air molecules, which are continually in motion and are bombarding the particle, cause the particle to acquire a vibration mode. Because of this vibration mode, the particles have a good chance of coming in contact with the fibers. The smaller the particle, the stronger this effect is. For large particles, over 1 micron in diameter, this filtration mechanism has virtually no effect. In the order list above, the mechanisms are increasingly important for decreasing particle sizes. The most critical areas lie between interception and diffusion. Airflow distribution and control. Depending on the degree of cleanliness required, it is common for air systems to deliver considerably more air than would be needed solely to meet temperature and humidity design. 
Airborne particles can be organic or inorganic. Most contamination control problems concern the total contamination within the air. Particles of different sizes behave differently as air moves through a room. Selection of the airflow patterns is a major step in clean room design. Because airflow is such an important aspect of particle control, the design of a clean room requires careful consideration of air motion and airflow patterns. There are generally two air supply configurations used in clean room design, namely non-unidirectional and unidirectional. In non-unidirectional airflow, there will be considerable amount of turbulence, and it can be used in rooms where major contamination is expected from external source, such as the the makeup air. This turbulent flow enhances the mixing of low and high particle concentrations, producing a homogeneous particle concentration acceptable to the process. Air is typically supplied into the space by one of two methods. The first uses supply diffusers and HEPA filters. The HEPA filter may be integral to the supply diffuser, or it may be located upstream in the ductwork or air handler. The second method has the supply air pre-filtered upstream of the clean room and introduced into the space through HEPA-filtered workstations. Non-unidirectional airflow may provide satisfactory control for cleanliness levels of class 1000 to class 100,000. The unidirectional airflow pattern is a single pass, single direction airflow of parallel streams. It is also called laminar airflow. Unidirectional clean rooms are used where low airborne contaminant levels are required and where internal contaminants are the main concern. They are generally of two types. Vertical downflow clean rooms where the airflow is vertical laminar in direction. And horizontal flow where the airflow is horizontal laminar in direction. In vertical downflow arrangement, clean makeup air is typically introduced at the ceiling and returned through a raised floor or at the base of the sidewalls. Horizontal flow clean rooms use a similar approach, but with a supply wall on one side and a return wall on the other. Typically a downflow clean room consists of HEPA filtered units mounted in the ceiling. As the class of the clean room gets lower, more of the ceiling consists of HEPA units until, at class 100, the entire ceiling will require HEPA filtration. The flow of air in a downflow clean room bathes the room in a downward flow of clean air. Contamination generated in the room is generally swept down and out through the return. The horizontal flow clean room uses the same filtration airflow technique as the downflow, except the air flows across the room from the supply wall to the return wall. Between the two, the vertical downflow pattern yield better results and is more adaptable to pharmaceutical production. Room pressurization. A clean room facility may consist of multiple rooms with different requirements for cleanliness. Rooms in a clean facility should be maintained at static pressures higher than atmospheric to prevent infiltration by wind. Positive differential pressures should be maintained between the rooms to ensure air flows from the cleanest space to the least clean space. The only exception to using a positive differential pressure is when dealing with specific hazardous materials where the statutory health and safety agencies require the room to be at a negative pressure.